Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronix Sweet, and actually, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the easiest way of how you can easily retain skin texture every single time you're retouching photos using frequency separation. So, oftentimes, I see so many of you retouching using frequency separation, and you tend to misuse it, and you end up with plastic looking like images every single time you post your images on social media. So, this tutorial is going to enable you to understand how you can easily retain skin texture every single time you're using frequency separation and if at all this is what you have always wanted i request that we hit the like button on this video because hitting the like button is going to help the video perform better and more people are going to reach out on it and also it is going to help the channel grow so i request that you hit the like button on this video so you can see a quick before and after for just the cleanup process and you can see that we have retained the original skin texture within the image and i'm just going to come straight out and delete this and we understand this so if at all you want to retain skin texture you have to apply the right amount of gaussian blood to your image every single time you're applying or playing your frequency separation action so if at all you have the action i'm going to be finding you later on and i'll be informing you as the tutorial is going on so basically if at all you don't have the action i'm just going to come and i'm just going to press ctrl j twice and I'm going to create two layers. So I'm just going to name this to low. And I'm going to name this into high. So as you can know, the low frequency layer contains the colors. And the high frequency layer contains the, the, the textures. So with this, I'm just going to hide the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer. So if at all you have the action, it usually stops at the point when you have to select the amount of Gaussian blur and apply it on the skin area. So this is the most important step for retaining skin texture in your images. So just come to filter. If at all you don't have the action filter, then you come to blur and come down to Gaussian blur. So when you come to Gaussian blur, this is the most important step if at all you want to retain skin texture in your images. So we have option that says radius. And before you can do anything, make sure the preview button is turned on. So with the radius turned on, you simply left click and simply drag the radius up so we are basically trying to eliminate the textures from the low frequency layer so that you can retain or remain with the colors within the low frequency layer so just come and left click and start dragging up the radius so you have to look for an area that has prominent textures and start taking up the radius up to a point when you just start to close out on the skin textures within the image and just stop at that point so when you're done doing that i'm just going to Take this a little bit higher. So when you're done applying the amount of Gaussian blur, so remember, your images may be having different levels of textures, meaning the amount of Gaussian blur you apply may be different from the one I have applied on mine. So you don't have to cram my radius. You have to apply the Gaussian blur radius depending on how many details you're losing out on the image or the photo itself. So just come and simply click on OK. So when you're done doing that, the image is going to look a little bit blurry. So when it looks a little bit blurry, just come the high frequency layer and now activate it. So if I told you have the action, after applying that, Gaussian Blight is automatically going to run and create for you the high frequency layer and the steps that we are going to do for those that don't have the action. So if I told you don't have the action, just come the high frequency layer and simply come to image, then you come to apply image so when you come to apply image remember we only want to remain with the textures in the high frequency layer so in order to remain with textures simply come and make sure you understand the bit of your image so for this image it is a 16 bit image and if at all you have 16 it means the image is going to be 16 bit so for a 16 bit image make sure the layer you're subtracting your textures from is the low frequency layer and make sure the channel is rgb and with that come to the blend mode and change it from whatever it is and change it to add so opacity at 100 percent the scale is to an offset zero and make sure preserve transparency and mask cannot check and simply come and turn on the invert option and when you do that you're going to see the textures on the gray kind of layer then if at all you have an 8-bit image simply come and make sure the invert option is not turned on and you select the low frequency layer the channel is rgb and the blend mode this time around has to be subtract or pass at 100%. The scale this time around is going to be 2. 
and offset 120 and make sure preserve transparency and mask cannot check and you see the textures on the gray kind of layer and you can hit ok so i have a 16 bit image meaning my blend mode has to be add and i'll turn on the invert option and i'll simply click on ok so with this done we want a blend mode that is going to take away the gray color from the image and that blend mode, that blend mode rather is known as linear light so just come right here and change it from normal and scroll down up when you see linear light and you get back the image it was meant to be before so after doing this we're just going to select both layers and after selecting them press ctrl g or command g on the keyboard and you can rename this group to frequency separation so after you have done this simply click on the drop down arrow and simply come and select your low frequency layer the reason for this is because we want to blend or even out the skin tone transitions remember skin retouching is more about blending the transitions within the skin color and removing the skin imperfections like the blemishes or the acne that is existing within the image so after doing this select your low frequency and simply come under the brushes right click and get the mixer brush tool then if at all you are having an older version of photoshop you may find your mixer brush tool after clicking down here so with this just come and set up the mixer brush tool the hardness is at zero and make sure clean brush is also selected and make sure you select the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke remember you're going to be mixing different areas that have a varying or various skin tone transitions or skin color the weight is going to be nine the load of 75 mix at 90 and the flow at 100 percent make sure sample all layers is not checked because when you check this it means the brush is also going to be copying information from the high frequency layer and painting it in the low frequency layer which we don't want so make sure sample orders is not ticked or checked so you may have different settings for a mixer brush tool and it depends on how you prefer to use the mixer brush tool but always make sure that you get the point for applying the gaussian blur if at all you want to retain and you apply the right gaussian blur radius this is the most important aspect for the tutorial so remember we already did that so next thing is going to be using the mixer brush tool to even out the skin tone transitions and how to do that you're just going to come and simply hide the high frequency layer and with the low frequency layer selected you're just going to be working with the colors in the skin tone so you have to increase or decrease on the size of the mixer brush tool as you're working on the image and you can do that by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard and if i told you the mixer brush tool is showing a, pl a plus icon simply press the caps lock key and also as i'm doing this you're going to notice that mine is going to be showing two circles and this doesn't matter because my screen recorder always has to highlight a second circle and show you where the adjustment is being applied so don't mind about the second circle it doesn't mean anything so how to use the mixer brush tool you simply make sure it is slightly bigger than the area that you're working on or it is actually the same size and left click and hold down and you move the mixer brush tool in the direction of that area you can see the cheekbone is moving in this direction i left click and hold down and move the mixer brush tool up to when i'm simply getting an even skin tone transition so you may notice that as you're doing this the skin is going to look a little bit more on the plastic side but this is the best technique to use because in this way you're just trying to get even skin color or skin tones or even transitions within the skin skin tone and as you're doing this always make sure that you don't zoom all the way in because when you do this you can't see the uneven skin tone transition so make sure you retouch at a distance and in that way you can see the uneven skin tone transitions and simply mix and blend so mix colors that are looking alike and harmonize them and where they're transitioning from one color to another reduce on the size and simply mix the border so that you can have a better skin transition or skin tone transition and when you're done doing this i'm just going to mix this quickly because i don't want the tutorial to be a pretty long one so i'm just going to mix and blend this so like i said when you're done blending the skin tone transition just come and turn on the texture or high frequency layer and you can see before and after before after you have still retained the textures but the skin is looking a little bit more even so work on every area that is containing skin and when you're done doing this you can select the high frequency layer 
and get the clone stamp tool and I prefer to use the hardness of 0% or percent the flat 100% and the sample is current layer and you can now come and hold down the option or alternate key on the keyboard option for Mac and alternate for Windows you hold it down and left click on an area that is close to the blemish and simply left click over the blemish to clean it up and eliminate it from uh, your image so that is how to use the clone stamp tool to remove blemishes from the image so this is it for this tutorial so you can save quick before after before after you have retained the skin texture but as well even out the skin tone transition so this is it for this tutorial and if at all you have learned something you don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating